Hey everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I am so excited to be sharing with you how you can paint this creativity tree. It's all in the feeling of fall, it's super whimsical, it's a lot of fun, but most importantly, it's very beginner friendly. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey guys. He's going to be tracking me with many of our cameras so that you guys can see all the action, understand exactly how I'm making something. He's also going to be reading comments because we do this as a live stream. So this is all really happening right now, unless you're watching it on replay, which is like, hi, thank you for joining us later. Hello, time travelers. <laughs> we have a lot of those on the show. These are always available for you guys to watch. So, you know, just enjoy them anytime. Don't feel like a lot of creative pressure. Let's talk about the materials we're going to be using today because there's a lot of wiggle room in this particular project. Now, I always let you guys know what I'm using. That is in the description, like the exact specific things. But I also let you know how you can have some leeway and some flexibility that works within your life. So this is a 9 by 12 canvas panel. I get these uh, at my local store and I buy them in packs. And the only thing to think about these is that if you get them too wet, they can bow, but they're really easy to store and they're very economical and they're easy to frame. Over here, I have my paint. Now I'm doing some fun stuff with this. I have what's called uh, fluid paint, but believe it or not, fun fact, this is very similar in the viscosity in its thickness to craft paint. So since this is a very flexible painting, you can actually do a lot of mix and match. And yes, craft paints work with fine art acrylic paints. They're all intermixable. These are just the brands and colors that I love. And so for this project, I have a turquoise. This is called Thalo Turquoise. You can use any turquoise or sky color that you like. I have a very bright orange. This bright orange is actually special. This is Pyral Orange. It is a fantastic substitute for those of you who are looking or cadmium substitute because it is as vibrant. But what you're looking for in whatever paint you're using is a bright orange that you like. This gold here is actually a very bright yellow when you add white to it. It's nickel ozo yellow. This is one of my favorite colors. Is I have it in acrylic, I have it in watercolor, I think I have it in pastel. I just always have this in my personal paint box. But you use the bright and cheerful yellow that you have in your own paint collection. I have my black, this specific black is carbon black. I have my burnt sienna, so you would want a reddish brown. And I have my naphtha red medium. You could use cadmium red medium if that's what you had. Uh, you could use any of your just kind of darker, deeper, richer reds that make you feel like, oh, follows right around the corner. But lots of options and abilities to exchange. I have Q-tips that I bundled together in threes. You can see how I've done them with just little rubber bands. And here's my Q-tip tip. I say Q-tip, I think in the same way that many of us say Kleenex when it's actually a facial tissue. <laughs> and these are cotton swabs. I go to my personal CVS and I get the beauty style of cotton swabs because I find that they're wrapped tighter and they fluff out less. Who's ready to get this in? Everybody is. They're really excited about this. I like doing these live on occasion because I think it lets us really get into it and ask questions if we have any and really talk about how the project is constructed, which the first part of the project is actually pretty fun, pretty mellow. I'm going to get, this is a one inch, uh, on here it says wash glaze, but what I would say is you could use a bright, you could use a flat. What you want is a nice big wide brush that's going to let you easily paint the canvas. And how I'm going to load it is I'm going to pull this white into the brush and I can see me flipping it. That's going to give me a nice load and I'm going to get a little of my Thalo turquoise. Again, one of my favorite colors. And I'm just going to paint from the upper right down towards the lower left, letting this brush, you know, leave these sort of little streaky areas. When I need more paint, I'll get some. I just flip and load. And I come from the outside of my paint areas, guys. I don't go to the middle because that gets everything all muddied up with pigment. And then you have to keep putting out paint. And it can actually really drive up the cost of your painting mm -hmm. as a weird thing. I'm so excited that everybody was able to come today. Who all do we have in the room, Mr. Cooney? Oh my gosh, I saw lots and lots of people. Over and look, I saw Sasty and Kimberly and Barbara and I saw Patty and uh, who else did I see who came in here? I saw Nikki in here earlier who, and 
me scroll up. Laura and Mark. Oh, hey, Mark. And Hi, um, Mark. Marcy and Brenda and Kelly and oh, it's Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. And hey, hey, um, Stephanie. Shelly, Sherry. Uh, some of these folks. That's not know. your Aunt Sherry. That's another Sherry, no, right? That's, okay. Uh, D- different sherry because like, i invited some of your family i think so if they're here hi <laughs> it's like some of them it's like i might know that sherry but i'm not sure and then there's tina it's, we know that tina it's really nice to keep running into the same wonderful painters that we like to paint with every week and see again and again because we get a real community going it's nice to have friends to paint with and be supported by because you know when you're starting out in your painting you need a nice safe place to say hey Here's my project. Did I do good? And know that people are going to respect your creative journey. Yeah. This would be like Romper Room in the Astrodome because we've got like 560 people. So it would, it would, I would have to be saying names for like an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is awesome. It can, it can get like that. We, uh, we were really glad to be able to come at night today um, just because it gives some different people a chance to come to a live. Mm-hmm. And that's always nice. Maybe we just paint the background of this canvas with this color. Oh, we're doing it. Isn't it a lovely color? It is a very pretty color. I say a lot to my community because we often mix thalo turquoise from our blue and our green. How mixable it is. But this is, this is what it's like when you get it remixed from the factory. It's very bright. And you can see I'm just smoothing this out. Letting this cover all of the canvas. And that's all it really takes. It's just kind of like a wispy, rainy day. I'm going to rinse out my brush thoroughly and vigorously, getting all the paint out of it. Vigorously. Vigorously. Well, sometimes you rinse softly and sometimes you rinse vigorously. I'm going to sip my little chamomile tea concoction. Yeah, I do add cream and stuff to my tea because <laughs> hot mess like that. <laughs> I think it's, how they say, is it, is it take your tea English? Mm-hmm. Except it's soy milk, so I don't think anybody English would ever do that. I'm not sure. If you're English and you do soy well, milk too, say hi and alleviate my concern because I always feel like this isn't proper. They have to have proper not vegan okay. British folk. I don't think they'll be up though because it's the middle of the night right now. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe they have Maybe. a midnight Maybe hankering. Maybe you're not out. They have a midnight hankering for some painting. So I'm going to dry my canvas so the next layer goes on beautifully. And yep. John is going to talk to you while I do that. So you're not alone because we don't want you to feel alone. No. no. Okay. So I'm going to say, hey, guys. It's really lovely to see all you guys out here. Um, really big, wonderful group of people. I love all of you guys. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we just thought we would come out here and paint a little painting. And Cinnamon's really enjoying coming out and in, in hanging out with you guys live. So we're trying to do that as often as possible. Um, so thank you for all the wonderful kind words. Just love seeing you guys. Don't forget, keep your heat on a low setting when you're drying your surface. Heat can induce color change and cracking and all sorts of things like that. So, you know, in your pro paints, that's not so much of a big deal. But on your more budget paints, that can be an issue. So just be careful with that and uh, stay low heat. Other than that... You should say something awesome about yourself to yourself because you probably don't do that enough. And that's something we should all do. So, right on. I'm going to do um, a little chalk sketching and paint this in freehand. But I recognize that if you haven't painted in a while, that could be a little overwhelming, even as I describe it. So, know that a traceable has been provided. And all you've got to do is like rub a chalk or graphite on the back and then just trace over the lines to transfer that on to the canvas. I have lots of videos that showcase this technique. And no, tracing is not cheating. It's actually something that artists in general have to do all the time because when you get into more and more expensive art materials, you wouldn't want to like mess up <laughs> a very expensive like, you know, watercolor paper trying to like work out a drawing. So, of course. We have to trace as artists. Totally normal technique to be using. Now, my chalk here, very ill-conceived, was white. <laughs> Do you need other colored? I'm going to just put this in. I'm going to leave a little opening oh, and remind it. myself that I can. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to leave myself a little opening right here. I like trees that have room for birds to fly through. And I'm going to make sure that my tree 
is about, leaves me about a hand width from the bottom of my nine by 12 here. Just to, you know, have room to put in a hill and be interesting. I'm gonna wander, I like to wander my little lines around. If you are a little brush or a very new painter and you're painting with us, I really want you to take a deep breath and realize that the goal of painting is not to be perfect because that isn't what we do in art. We don't make perfect things, but we do have a perfectly good time if we remember to relax. So be sure to do your breathing and not put a lot of pressure on yourself. The reason that anybody paints is to have fun and express themselves and stress really interferes with that. So just let go of those expectations and those conditions that you have in your mind about how you have to be awesome and your painting needs to look exactly like mine and this moment is the moment and just relax into it. Remember, this is art and art is at its most fundamental level, fun. Yeah. I'm gonna grab one of my little bunches of pre-bundled together Q-tips. I like to start on the yellow on this particular tree and kind of work an outside edge first. And as you see me going into this nickel ozo, you're going to see it really brighten up with the white. It's just a very bright color. It looks like a gold. It almost looks like an ochre, but it's nothing like it. This would be just as pretty with a Hansa yellow. You know, so don't be like, oh no, I'm missing a material. Mm. It's all over because it's not just beginning. Now when I'm tapping, I like to tap down and let some of these be loose and open and some of them will get tighter and I will get somewhere I get more white on the paint and that'll lighten my yellow and that starts to make it seem like there's different values in my tree and that's how we start to get that sense of of the shape of the tree and at its heart, this Q-tip method is essentially pointillism, which is why I think I embraced it so thoroughly. I had painted with Q-tips before, oh gosh, when we were first going live to do um, some sisters, it's a couple's painting, two dancing sisters uh, together. But this method really caught on and I really love it. And I don't know, we've done 30 well, paintings know. of it now. Can I say, speaking of paintings we've done a long time ago, uh-huh. Alec and Gina, they uh, Gina. they've been painting with us since 2014 with painting with drips, the the tree with drips, and they just wanted to say art high fives and hugs and thank you for everything. And Boom! Tree with drips days. How many times was it? Twelve that I went to touch the canvas. Does anybody remember that? Well, John's mocking me in the video edit. I don't, is that that one? It's was, that oh one. Oh my gosh. It's that one where I'm like, I'm going to paint. No, I'm not. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> that was a funny video. Thank you for hanging in this long and making art that much a part of your life. I love to hear that. I love, love, love to hear that. I hope the event helped people find this today. And I hope that the text notification helped everybody find it. If you follow the page and you like it, they're more likely to send you notifications for, you know, as much as any of the platforms actually do that. Yep, They're feel, very moody about it. I just, I'm grateful for their free web hosting. Yeah, if you jump out to our website, which is theartsherpa.com, you can find information on how to sign up for the, the SMS notifications. So you can be nomified by text when we go live. It's, it's nice to know. You nomified! Can be in the so see how I'm just still working this Q-tip and tapping up and down. Now, if your Q-tips are already like little cotton balls of fluffy mess, like a like a cocktail you pop, what that's about is the type of Q-tip. Um, my hack for that, it's kind of gross, but it does work. If you've got the Q-tips that you've got and you're getting the fluffiness, if you take a bunch of them and you uh, spit twirl them and let them dry, I call it spit sizing. I don't like that stuff in my mouth and my teeth. It freaks me out. But you can tighten them up and they'll be less fuzzy. But again, I really have found that the makeup uh, <laughs> brand of Q-tips, it was important to me because I can't do mouth sizing that um, consistently. It freaks me out. <laughs> John, who's been married to me a long, long time, can tell you that wool on my teeth. I think that there is a traditional uh, brush making technique where they use starch and water that you could also do. Uh, okay, or that. But 
I will mouse size thread too to thread a needle. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to go into my just pure kind of more strong Ozo, and I'm just see, I'm just adding this little darker value. A lot of times when we do these uh, paintings, we really sort of speed through them in very short order, but we're letting you guys really be here with me through this process and see how I'm laying it in. And I'm getting darker in here. As you go into a tree, if it's a dense tree, it should have, you know, some real dark values as it clusters in towards the center and then patch highlights on branches and outer edges. So I just think about that when I'm designing these Q-tip pieces. So yeah, they're whimsical and yes, they're playful, but I'm still thinking about, you know, serious art stuff with them. Pulling a little bit of dark value through here. Breathing deeply, 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 deeply. Going a little bit darker, go dark, man. If you know you're feeling like I'm getting to the end of like the kind of patterns that I'm liking, I can then take them and just flip them over. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then they're like this again. Where they have the more open little distinctive dot. This also works with the C spud, so feel playful. Now there's lots and lots and lots. I'm gonna come up here if that's okay, John. You can go anywhere. Oh, I'm just letting you know. Um, if he has to go real fast with the robotic camera, it can uh, make some of our viewers a little bit woozy. Yeah, I've got it. I've got it pretty on pretty much slow mode. He's right. strolling today. Put this aside here and grab another little pristine bunch of Q-tips. I can't wait till we get to the dotting part. It's my favorite. Mm. So now I'm going to show what Pyro Orange, Pyro Orange is like amazing. Um, Chris Farrell over at Golden Paint has been for three years trying to explain to me that Pyro Orange, Pyro Orange is the best ever. It's a pretty good color, though. And I just, you know, I'm like, oh, I've already invested in all this cadmium orange, which is a really vibrant color. But, you know, can be toxic if ingested. And you may have an allergy because, you know, of the ingredients. So I was like, oh, I was Texas yeah. Art Supply. We went down there. And I just treated myself to some of Chris's. I just think of it as Chris's orange. And that's what you're using right there, right? Yeah, this is what I'm using right here. Now, he does the paint pours with it. So he's. I think this is this really close. I like this color so much that maybe just a little bit redder is what I want my next car color to be. A little bit redder. A little bit redder, maybe. It's just it just screams fall, doesn't it? it it's well, it's really cool. I, it's a it's a neat color for a little something cute. You can get a little white in there if you want. It just creates different little value sets. And then I go back into the yellow. You can see I work those. And I just play with that. This tree, I spent a little more time playing with the leaves and the value set just because I felt like it. Sometimes you feel like it. I'm going to go more into the yellow and grab some of my white. I still have the orange on here. Trees like to have their own little biz, you know? Yeah, they just go super sherbert. Paint should be fun and taking a second and really enjoying. What your paint is doing kind of honors the people that make it because believe it or not, there's not too many places that make artist paint anymore. It's mostly all house paint and commercial applications. And so there's these little houses that still make it and little places. And you're really celebrating somebody who thought a lot about you and your experience when you stop and enjoy the color. Because they have to make this really still essentially by hand. There's some machinery involved, but there's still a lot of people involved in the making of paint. And, you know, if you've ever sat and talked with anyone in that industry, they're really, really all about your experience. Now, if I think Sherry's asking here, if you don't have uh, fluid paint and you're just doing this with heavy body, do you have any tips on that? Yeah, I would um, take Dixie Cup. And very slowly add a little water. You know how you kind of do with like cornstarch and then stir it? 
and get it to that consistency. I wouldn't even worry about using a medium. I don't think you need to. But you would just like put a little water in, stir it, put a little water in. If you do the stirring that way, you'll get a good incorporation throughout the paint and you can get it to a fluid consistency. And that's what I do when I'm like, oh, I can't get to an art store. All I have is my heavy body paint. I need a fluid paint. I just get down to the hand mixing of it. And it also works really great for the pores. <laughs> What usually goes wrong in that is just trying to mix it too quickly. And I think what what gets people when they're when they're trying to hand thin down their paint is they go too fast. Gotcha. And then you end up with too much water. Or or it's not thoroughly mixed and it's kind of like chunks of paint and then water and it's a hot mess. And then people are like, Yeah, I really tried here, but I just feel like it went wrong for me. And I'm like, oh, Totally see what happened there. That's just a matter of slowing down. If like, you're doing any of the paint pouring, you may even want to get a lid and let that paint rest for a few hours, even overnight, as long as it's sealed, to let the air bubbles and stuff out. So you can do it. I've had about every weird thing happen to me in art that could happen, like material be broken or missing or... <laughs> didn't make it, got seized at the airport. Just stuff has happened over the years. And I have many strategies and ideas on how to correct for things, except for I'm missing my white paint. And even then I'll just use the canvas as the white. <laughs> you can see I'm just val changing up these value sets. I'm really loving this tonight. I hope everyone else is loving this tonight. It's very cool. Just fun stuff. All right, now as we move in, I'm gonna take a little of this orange over to my red. And just start tapping in the red, the deep red. Now, that peril orange. Yes. Can, or red. Can, the naphtha red or the peril orange? The peril. Uh, can, can you show the bottle? Yeah. So okay. they can see that bottle? Because oh, the spelling yeah. was what was tough. Uh, actually, bring it over Hi to the other canvas. I might be saying it wrong. Here, bring, it, bring it over to the other canvas. This one? There you go. Boop, boop. There it is. And the pigment is pigment 73, and it doesn't matter what paint line or what they call it on the out. Look, my nails are a hot mess. Um, you can tell I've been arting. Huh. Pigment, pigment yellow, P-O, means pigment orange, right? Pigment orange 73. Gotcha. Um, they're proud of it, but it goes a long way. It does. It goes a long way. They're proud of it. You can do that orange too. And also like, you know, sometimes those craft sets come with a lot of colors and I just grab some more orange, but really I want some red. So I'm going to go back. And start. You know, so don't ever feel like, oh, awkward or weird about using that either. Right? This is your art time. You, you get the art materials that your budget allows for, that your area allows for. I try to be transparent about what I'm using. Really just so that you're aware. Because sometimes, you know, people forget to share that or maybe they're not being as transparent about it. And I can come along and like some of these, I can be like a little bit of the red and the orange and it makes these half step transitions. If we were doing copy markers, we'd have to chart this all out. But we're not, so we don't. No charting. No charting. Instead, we will make dots with Q-tips. Make dots with Q-tips. Enjoy yourself. Well, see, it creates a lot of, you know, dimensionality. And again, just having some fun. I like to mix some of those together. Change it up. Have fun. And every time you make one of these trees, they're a little bit different. If you're doing a bigger space, you know, I would definitely, definitely, maybe, I'm gonna go back with just some orange right here. See how that blends these edges? Coming back with a little bit of that orange. It makes a nice blend there. It's so bright, the camera's like, <gasps> the camera's yeah. having a little moment, isn't it? It's awesome. The camera's like, I got it, I got it. I'll tamp this down. I'll take this party in my eyes. You know, and again, Pointillism is just a very, very slow version of this. And, and you know, we're, we, are, we are reaching all the way over to the other side of the planet where in Perth, Australia, Leanne is watching. Hi, Leanne. 
And that's pretty cool. So. Oh, I love, love. I'm getting some new fresh Q-tips. I love, love, love our Australian community. And I'm very glad that the Sydney Art Store is, you know, carrying stuff now. But you guys do pay a higher price point for your art supplies. I'm, I've, I have all my, all my Australian friends and I have uh, talked about that. Cried about this. <laughs> yeah, we got to get the cost of that down. That's a Australian man. They get it rough with a lot of the goods there, and that's so sorry. I, I understand the trouble of all of the stuff that that is. That's tough. You guys have some good local paint houses, so you know. Think about yeah. companies like uh, Matisse Derivan. Mm -hmm. uh, Montmart Art is there. He's he's from there. Yeah, there's a bunch of art resources right there locally. And I went and called them all to make sure they were sourcing their pigments responsibly. Because so, I'm that weird kind of person. She, she, I did. I'll call, I'll call up a place and be like, where are you getting your okra from? Tell this, me the truth now. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like getting a call from your mom. The Sherpa's calling and <laughs> asking about your paint sourcing. <laughs> it is. <laughs> You're like, why did we give her the card? That was not a good plan. I didn't know she was going to call us. <laughs> so I'm taking my yellow. If you notice, I'm working in my yellow area, and I'm coming back and sort of blending these little edges. I'm just making a slightly smoother transition. As well. Like you might do. I'm getting a little more of my just nickel. It's just, it's just a nice thing that I can do. You don't have to do it. It's just you can. I do. It is like getting a call from your mom. I should think about it. I'm going to have to hug everybody when I see them next year. <laughs> Did I call? They sent me the, um, the new interesting fun fact about Matisse. Hmm. Fun fact is they are the only fine art distributor of Yinmin Blue. Oh. I have a tube. That is right. It, it's rough, though. Like, I, I, they sent me one, and I'm like, I kind of failed at my digital video creation because I liked it so much. I was like, I can't paint with it. It's too nice. All right, I've got my orange here. But it's really, really cool thing. And now Crayola, because Crayola has a Yinmin blue crayon. Do they? Yep, they do. We got some in the kids' school supplies. If I you check your kids' school supplies, out. they may have the rarest, newest blue in, in their crayon box. Cool thing Crayola did. I'm going to check it out. Other fun fact. I'm just kind of working some of the orange. And as soon as I'm happy with that, as soon as I'm like, oh, I feel good about my tree. My tree is speaking to me. Because even though this is Q-tips, I still want my tree to speak to me like any other painting that I would be doing. <laughs> All right. And I'm happy with that little, little puff of leaves. And I actually did pretty good about, I mean, obviously not earlier. I got paint all over my whole hand, but. Today, right now, I did okay. So the next part that I'm going to do is I'm going to dry again so I can paint the ground and start the trunk. Okay. That gives John a chance to talk to you, and I will sit my... I want to microwave this again, though. Okay. I will. I can't microwave and talk, and mm -hmm. this is complicated work here. I was looking for one of the children, but they have obviously they've, went off to the game you. system. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start drawing, okay. babe. So while she's doing that, I will kick back and say, yeah. Thank you guys for joining us, and, you know, uh, take a moment and, you know, remember that you are special and awesome here, and we appreciate you coming and being part of our community and sparing and sharing your special, awesome uniqueness with us, because, you know, Cinnamon and I would just be... <laughs> broadcasting into the darkness if it weren't for you guys here with us today and every one of you guys is it makes our life better for being part of it and we just really appreciate that you guys come and spend this time with us so thank you very much for coming and hanging out with us and i'm sure that here any moment now i will forget things to say see i feel it coming on but look Oh no, she tricked me and flipped the switch to another gear so that she can take even longer and leave me out here with things that I've forgotten to say. Like, you could probably check in the description down below to find links to all the materials. Woohoo, you're back! 
Were you, were you panicking? <laughs> no, you maybe a little bit. I was like, like I wrote, what am I gonna say next? I was I like, know, stuff I was down and some to stuff and some stuff. I, I was guess. down to check the li- links in the description down below. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> just a regular round. So I'm gonna take a round brush. Um, now here's the interesting. This is a number eight round, but you you guys should realize like. In my long handle, this is a four round. There isn't really a standard sizing with um, brushes. So just so to look, you're looking for something that's going to give you a nice point and still let you cover canvas easily. It's kind of the sizing range that you want. I always list exactly what I use in the description right after the show. But just in case you're in a different area or you don't have these brands or you need different information, that's what I'm genuinely looking for. I'm going to try this one. And I'm gonna start out with my black. I'm gonna load it all up into the brush. So I pull this out and I really work it in to the brush. And I'm gonna start here, like almost two fingers up. I'm gonna make a little dot. I, I like to call that planting a seed. I'm gonna plant a seed. Plant a seed. And I'm going to just take my brush up through the tree, I'm gonna come up here, and then I'm gonna go curl, fun. <laughs> Just, oh, I curled a different direction. Every time I curl, I do a different direction. It's what is with me? I curled a different way. You curl exactly how I did initially, or curl with me now, I'm, I'm like that. I have to take my, the curl where it takes me. So my your curl, curl cannot, cannot be contained. It cannot be contained. So now the base of my tree needs to be a little bit wider. And then as it goes up into the branches, even though these are creative curly branches, they're going to get thinner and thinner and thinner. That's something that you want to think about when you're painting your tree. And if you want to use a traceable again here just to trace out that trunk, that is okay. If you want to use your chalk again, maybe sort of pre-sketch it in before you go in with the black paint, that's okay. This is a very nerve-wracking space for new painters, the black paint. Something I'm gonna show you before this paint dries, if it's still wet and you think you made a boo-boo, you can come back with a clean brush that's damp. As long as what's underneath it is dry, you should be able to lift. See how I'm doing? Yeah. I just want, there wasn't really a boo-boo there, but I just thought it might give you guys some relaxation. The other thing is, is that with acrylic paint, you can really easily paint over stuff once it's dry. So if it's dry, then you won't have as much to worry about. So you could go right over it and try to get a good curl on this. So I can dot it. I like to dot it. And line it. There we go. Whimsical, creative tree. Not really one of nature's trees. But in my studio. So since I curled like that, I'm going to definitely have to like counterbalance that curl. I'm making one here. Every time you paint one of these. There we go. Silly me. And I'll make a opposing curl that kind of comes out the tree. There we go. So I'm just using this black fluid paint. You could be using craft paint. If you're using heavy body paint, you'll want to thin it. There we go. Now, you're likely to obsess over every element of your painting. As new artists do, I'm going to ask you just to relax and not to, to not to, don't worry too much. Because we've got a lot of little whimsy to put on this tree trunk, and that's going to give you a lot of forgiveness in what you're doing. Now let's bring it out here, and I'll try to remember what I did last time. There we go. has almost an element of the beetle juice to it, this tree. Definitely starts pulling us into that nice fall space, which I think a lot of people are ready for. You may have to get your camera just to switch. Just, oh, there it goes. Oh, was that in the way? You were just a touch. Okay. I think it was your hairband was in the way. 
My hairband is awesome. This is a very awesome hairband. So I'll go ahead and pull a little curly Q off this. I think there's room. I'm always looking for where is there room to put in that curl. There you go. So sometimes I find it's easier to start the stroke into the branch and then bring the curl around like that. And you'll see me like very subtly like thickening the tree as I'm working those curls. So see, we're getting in there. We're getting those whimsy curls worked out. Some whimsy. We need a little whimsy in our life. Now, through here, it's very hard for me to keep a steady hand. I know many of you write that that's challenging for you. So I can rest a pinky or a wrist, but what I'm doing is basically just trying to yeah. steady my hand just a bit so that I can control the amount of pressure that I'm putting on the brush. If you're very, very young or very, very new to painting, it can be really hard to control how hard you're pressing on that brush. And the harder you press, the thicker the line, right? So, you know. Be forgiving of yourself with that. Because remember, we're going to come back with white lining. Which is going to be, in this particular case, yellow lining. But <clears throat> still, for the purposes of our tree, I'm going to come right here. And just bring that trunk in. Have fun with it. And the trick will be trying to keep my hand out of the black paint for me. Ah, oh, that was nice. Okay. And then this can have a counterbalance little branch. And when I say counterbalance, it's just some nice, sometimes nice to put opposing curls. Create energy going opposite direction. I feel like I definitely need one here. Oh, that was perfect. That is what I needed. If you've never painted before or it's been a really long time, remember to be really relaxed with yourself. Don't say anything mean. It won't help. But it will take away all the good fun that you were having. All right, so that just needs to dry for a minute while, you know, it's thinking about its life choices. <laughs> and I'm going to come down here and start to put in some of that grass and that space. I have an angle brush anywhere. I have a nice angle. I'll grab a three-quarter angle. I'm just grabbing a brush that's clean that I can paint with. I'm not even going to worry about getting it in the water on this. And I'm going to just bring. A little bit of land up here. I could have used the brush that I painted the background in with, but I didn't see it under my towel. <laughs> <laughs> it was hiding. It was hiding. That's all that happened. I could have used it again, but sometimes they hide from me. All right? And that's, you know, it happens. You can add a little bit of the black to your brown make it even like kind of deeper like loamy earth if you garden you know what i mean about loamy earth this is the kind of earth that earthworms are in and in the spring it will bloom rich flowers but right now it's doing its fall thing so we're okay with that now that i found the brush i was looking for <laughs> Not the brush I was looking for. So while this is having a little dry, I might grab just a little of the black, not a lot, because you don't want it to be too dark. And I'm going to go ahead and start talking about the grass. And I do that by just using the tip of my brush. And I curve the stroke. Can you see how it's sort of curving to like, the, I just exaggerated that so you guys could see that, to the right. And I'll curve it back towards yeah. the left. That's all I'm doing. Just a curve in it. Because grass is very unruly. You could use my fan brush if you have it. Fan brushes can be a nice way to put in grass. 
just enjoying this. So the reason I curve the grass so many different directions is because, you know, this stuff blows in the wind, right? It doesn't just sit still. It's impacted by the world. And also because it creates an energy within the painting. These lines, every line has meaning. It's like a, it's like a stanza in a poem. So every time you make a beautiful little line like that, you're just adding to your painting. You know, if you get too neat with your grass, it's going to look like you mowed it. <laughs> Don't mow true. your grass. Huh? It's true. I've seen it. Not to tease you, babe, because I know you got to mow tomorrow. <laughs> it's true. I do. <laughs> You're like, oh, no, mowing. Don't bring it up. It's a little hot where we are. That's okay. I have a riding mower. It's true. You do. So to paint over the black, I want to add a little bit of this just bright brown. I may dry this with my hair dryer just a little bit. It doesn't have to be as dry as what we had it before, but it will help to have it be a little bit dry. Ah, uh, there it goes. Ah, sorry. Sorry about that. For some reason, my buttons were not responding, so I had to manually push the button. Anyway, don't bore you with the details. So, yeah, make sure that you're drying and... You've heard the shtick, so don't use heat, and you know that we love you guys for coming and hanging out, and don't forget, you can find the resources on the website, and, um, you know, be good to yourselves, make sure that, you know, you, uh, you say something unexpectedly nice to a loved one. That's a good thing to, to always, to, to think about doing, you know, I'm trying to remember to be mindful, so just, you know. Hey. How's We're everybody doing? Chatting. 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 Are you chatting? So I'm going to add a little bit. Let me put my vision enhancers back on. Do, do, do. These are my vision enhancers. Like Jordy LaForge. So I'd like to add a little brown into here. It's just like a little highlight. I still want to see a bunch of the black because the black gives me the contrast in my tree. But I put a few little pops of this here and there. Decoratively fun, if that makes sense. This gives you a little bit of fun, decorative, you know, so it's just more than a silhouette tree, right? I like when we do these online to just put a little extra zzz in them. Mm. Zzz. Have a little zzz with your art. A little fun. I think my art is zzzless. Your art is not zizzless. He's so funny. It's, His art has plenty of zizz. It's forbidden. There's well, no one, zizz. you have to count that, you know, some of your art are these videos. That's art. <laughs> I'm just pushing your buttons while people watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <sighs> oh. But you can see that I added just a little bit of character to the piece. And I'm not like, I'm just like leaving a little black in there and just adding these little pops of brown. Saying, oh, yes, you're lovely. Well, that's having a bit of a dry. I can come back and start talking about my grass. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is maybe a little bit of my, my yellow and my brown. And you can get some white into it. All right, I'm going to just start adding a little grass. Lots of little grasses. Lots of little colors. Oh, Very playful. Those are much greener grasses. Well, or drier. Just, just getting some different things. It's still fun to come back with just a little bit of the brown. But you'll notice I didn't rinse my brush out. I'm going to be layering. I had done this. I had thought about doing this in the fan. But then I realized that everybody has, feels like they have to go out and buy a fan. And I do think you should go get a fan. Because they're fabulous fans. But on a first timer project, it's good to be able to just paint with what you have. You know, sometimes our family members give us like the doctor says, "Oh, you should paint for stress," and then everybody goes out and buys you little kits online from Amazon. <laughs> right. And then <laughs> You're like, what stressful. do I do with this? And that's when I come in. <laughs> this is what we do with that, and then it's going to turn into a lifelong obsession. And she shit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I'm going to continue to add a little of the yellow and maybe get some of the white into my brush. See how it's sort of loosely mixed and all on the tip of that brush? It doesn't crawl up to here. If you're finding your paints crawling up to here, go ahead and just wipe it off and start again and reload. That's okay to do. Just add a little of these little yellow bits. Isn't that fun? So I'm barely, I'm just so light with my stroke is what it is. That's how I get my good grass. See, I'm just like stroking and then I come back and then forward and back, weaving through the fields of grass like a little field mouse. Wouldn't that be fun to be a field mouse in that field of grass? You would just feel so safe from all the owls. You're like, I'm this color. You cannot see me. This is my time of year. You feel almost playful and also be daytime, so less owls. Owls are not out as much in the daytime. A lot of feelings, apparently, about owls and grass. You do. And field mice. And field mice and all of it. So I'm going to put out a little more of my orange. When you're, if you're doing the artist, and actually I would think for the crop paint, sometimes it's good to give it a shake because pigment can settle. So if, you, if you're having a lot of trouble with uh, coverage, that is a good thing to do. And there we go. Isn't that a wonderful touch on top? I really, really enjoy the orange pop. So much. So this is a this is actually called um, if you're wondering what this is, this is the Silver Silk. Um, it's a new run from this company, uh, Silver Brush Limited. They're putting out soon. And it's really nice for water media and soft body paints like this. If you're like, it's purple. Where is that? <laughs> That's what it is. I know what the questions are gonna be as soon as like I get offline. What's a purple brush? It's purple. I know what you mean. I'm still trying to convince them to, to make them in mermaid. I was, I was just reading, man, chat. It's crazy out here. First of all, I have to say we have we have a lot of Nickies. Do we have a lot of Nickies? A lot of Nickies. A lot of Nickies high, high tonight. Nikkis. Yeah. Welcome all you Nickies. And 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 Christy, of course, I did not forget. I saw Christy here earlier, but I wanted to say hey because I saw her and didn't forget. Yeah, we have some really. We have some. We have some like fans have been with us forever. Ever. Yeah, so <laughs> we love all you guys, and thank you for joining us. And we are really grateful for that, too, because that is, that is a blessing. I'm going to rinse this out very thoroughly. We have, we have a couple Kims, too. We do. We do. You that. Like 20 you? or 300 <laughs> or 3,000. Like, there's shake a lot this of up them. And put a little more out. I like to, I felt like it was worth it to take a little of this yellow and white like this i thought it created a very Super. nice <laughs> grounding space to take this line and it also trimmed in the tree branch this, this is why i was like don't be too panicky about stuff because i knew we'd be trimming our tree branches in a little bit so i can just come along here and add this little line and if i needed to paint over some of an over thickened branch i could do that at this point isn't that fun not only is it really pretty and it adds a dimension I'm going to roll my brush out and load everything up on the tip again. But it lets me make some adjustments to anything I felt like got a little cray. And I can just come in and be like, hey, hey, beautiful little branch. Could you, could you trim down? And it just adds something pretty. You can do it or not do it. There's nothing in my painting that you're obligated to do. I'm not going to come in your home and check your work ever, ever. But you are welcome to share with me if you want your result. We're always happy to see everybody's result. I'm going to take this line down the side here. All right. A little more yellow, a little more white, rolling it off. Sometimes I get a little crazy and overload my brush. Now, I feel like it got a little thick here, so I'm going to just come here and go, no. See how that makes it work a little better? 
So it's decorative, it's pretty, it corrects for any little moments that you had, and you know we always have moments. Maybe I'll come right here. And you can come in and be like, hey. Just bustly. There we go. This was a little bit thick, I thought, here, so I'm going to come back, trim that out. Good stuff. Be charming. Be happy. Be whimsical. And maybe I'll just put a little bit right there. That'll look real pretty against that dark background. There we go. So that's really fun. We got a little bit of that highlight in there. Now the next part, you can use the back of a detail brush. You could use a uh, toothpick. Um, anything really, I'm going to use the dotting tool. This is actually from a galaxy set that I have because I was like, it's got to be easier than this to make stars. And so we designed a galaxy set. And I'm going to just dot these decorative little dots. Now, one thing that you can do if you want them to be smaller as they go out, every time you tap, they're going to get sequentially smaller. That, see how I can do that by go starting back and then moving forward. It can be hard to guesstimate, but you get the gist. Every once in a while, whatever you're dotting with, you should probably wipe off because the paint begins to dry on it. I love how it does that, the dot, 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 dot. I think this is a fun part for me. Hopefully it's a fun part for you too. Yeah, I think so. There's a lot of folks I was just reading here in chat. There's a lot of people who've enjoyed that you've uh, provided these, you know, for I people. I goofed here. I saw the little squish. Yeah, I squished. I'm going to get some clean water. I'm going to fix my squish. I wasn't sure what that was. But... I squ my hand, what it always is. I'm heavy handed. So This is me fixing it. You can fix a boo-boo on your painting. Clean brush, clean water before it's dry. When I come put those back, you'll never even know it was there. Okay, you were asking something? I felt like I should be honest that I had a boo-boo. I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry, babe. It's okay. Let me reload up. Boo-boos happen to everybody. They do. I gotta watch for those now. Watching for the boo-boos. You can see every dot getting smaller. Cool effect. First load's the biggest, every dot. So you don't have to have a different dotting tool every time where you're trying to get those dots. Is, is the reason I'm pointing this out, because sometimes people will be like, oh my gosh, do I have to buy a different tool for every dot so I get a different size? I'm like, no, just one tool. One back of the brush. Look, all fixed. Like it never happened. So it's not that bad. Don't don't freak out on any little mistakes, any little boo-boos, any little things that happen. Wow, that came together really fast. Didn't it? Just sign it. I do. I love that everybody showed up today. If you guys are up for it, we're going to be back. Uh, almost same bad time, same bad channel, but I think we're going to come back tomorrow with watercolor. Mmm. Who's ready for watercolor? Oh, a lot of folks are. Everyone was ready for watercolor. We're gonna do some watercolor tomorrow. Something really pretty and cute. I know, lock, I know a lot of the uh, Nikki's, Christie's, Patty's, and and Stacy's are waiting for watercolors. Yeah, I have like forty or forty nine easy lessons here on Facebook and IGTV. Tomorrow we're gonna come and paint something just a little bit more, but still super beginner friendly. I'm kind of excited about it. I hope you guys had fun today. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I was coughing. 
Yeah, no, everyone was having a really good time. We had a wonderful crowd, and I can't say how much I appreciate everybody joining us. So thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for making time for this part of your life, this creative part of your life, because you really matter. How you feel matters. We are so excited to have you join us. I'm really excited to see your paintings. Um, you're welcome to come into group and share them or post them on the page here or on our website. We have a lot of venues on, on pretty much all the social media that's reasonable and family friendly um but most importantly i really really want you to be good to yourself cut yourself a break be easy with yourself be forgiving don't say hard words inside and be good to each other just be as kind as you can be do your best in every one of those moments and we want to see you at the easel really soon bye bye bye, -bye.